everybody welcome back to Hudson Valley prepping and survival and uh, as promised in my last video I'm gonna do a breakdown of my snare kit that I keep in my bug out bag I want to show you guys the contents of that kit it's uh, it's pretty neat it was made up by a friend of mine old mutt and uh, let's tear into it guys all right guys this is my snare kit this is a cheapo Walmart watertight uh like you find it in the fishing section um it's probably an ozark trail i don't even see a name on it but it's waterproof so it'll help me keep these from rusting if i run into uh any bad weather so let's tear it open i have uh, a pack of large snares here i believe there's three large snares these ones are pretty big and they do have the uh, the deer catches on them, the stops, so that you can only catch small fur bearers. And if a deer gets tangled in this, it leaves the hole just big enough that they'll be able to pull their little skinny foot out. Um, and then I have some smaller snares. There's uh, three of these also. So that's six snares total. And then I have spools and spools of wire. Um, light gauge wire, heavy gauge wire, some old military wire. This is great for camouflage in uh, like grassy areas, dry grassy areas, or sandy, rocky terrain. This is a good camouflage for that. And here's another spool of wire with the two yellows and the two greens. Um, both camouflaged already and ready to go. Another small spool of wire. And to go along with your wire, small pair of pliers, a little Leatherman-like tool. Um, this is a cheapo one, but just for bending up this little wire here, this is perfect. There's a little knife and, you know, all the gadgets and, and doodads on it. Um, let's see. And the twine. The twine I have, actually, to help camouflage this bright wire. This is so shiny, so what I would do is actually thread a piece of this. Let's see if we can get an end loose quick here. There we go. Thread this into the twine. Just lace it right on there to help hide the shininess of this. Just keep lacing it on there. You're never gonna get it perfect, but you can weave it in and out in spots. It'll definitely help hide it. And that, that'll stand out a lot less on a snare trail than uh, that bright wire. So I figured it'd be good to have some of that in there. And hey, bailing twine, always handy. This is another small little wire and bank line kit. It's got waxed bank, bank line in here. Um, and tape, extra tape. Got to have extra tape. And this little folding saw. You can use that to make stakes to set your snares with. You want to tie these off really well, especially the big ones. Um, I would triple up some of the heavy gauge wire on here on one of these big snares to uh, hopefully hold a creature of size, something of substance. And I've got a little brass ring in there too. That'll help uh, clip whatever I trap or hopefully trap. Um, just clip it on your bag when you're walking out. That way you don't have to uh, get yourself messy carrying out your dinner. And uh, that's my little snare kit, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Well, I'm going to break down one more piece of my kit for you guys. Um, you may have saw this in my last video. This is my little nesting cup twig stove set up right here um i like it it's pretty handy it's small uh, i don't like the rattle so that's why i have this bag here i store this guy in the bottom of this bag roll it all up and uh makes a nice little bundle and uh cuts down on a lot of that shaking noise so the tighter you can pack things the better but i really like the little bag um it came in a od green one the zippers on that sucker failed, so I upgraded to a multi-cam-ish one. Um, and I'll break this guy down for you also. 
I keep some aluminum foil to cook fish or whatever you find in the woods. Um, a pot grabber goes along with this guy. The Yuko matches. The Instafire. The pot holder or hanger. And this all breaks down into this little kit here. These are the custom cross hatches made out of steel for the stove. They've got a little uh, a little bevel to the edge of it there, and they're notched so that they fit nicely inside one another. And then they nest on that cup, perfectly cut to sit on there. And I'll show you guys that in a second. And a lighter. Woohoo! Lighters and matches make for the easiest fire starting that you can possibly do. So as you tear this open, you've got your first large Pathfinder school cup here. It's got some measurements on the inside there. I don't know if you guys can see those, but there's a couple measurements on the inside there. It gives you uh, 25 ounces, 20 ounces, and 16 ounces on the inside of that cup there. Um, and then you have the big single wall metal container. These are uh, very important. A lot of the containers you find today are all double walled and double walled will not really boil your water because there's an insulation layer in the middle there and all you're really going to do if you boil water in a double walled metal container is ruin your double walled metal container. So single wall if you can find it. Single wall containers. Down in the bottom here I have a uh, long handle spoon so I can get way down in that cup and not get my fingers all messy. And this is handmade by my buddy Old Mutt. He has taken a, a tin cup here and drilled some air holes in it. So now when you combine, oh, there's one more piece in here. I'm forgetting, let's see, the lid for the pot here. So now that that guy's empty, this guy, you'd set up, load your Instafire in there, your twigs. We'll demonstrate this in a future video. And uh, you drop your little cross hatch on there. And you can cook your dinner right there on that. And you don't have to worry about pot holders because you have a pot handle. Well, there it is. That's my little backpacking cooking kit and uh, mini twig stove. Thanks for watching Hudson Valley Prepping and Survival.